Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is Methods, the guild store. The guild store is not just for purple gear and exclusive character farms. There's some incredible deals that I think most of the player base is missing out on. First, we're gonna focus on information that is going to be relevant to players who are interested in relics. Then we're gonna expand our focus to all stages of roster gearing. Then we'll zoom in and we will give some information that is relevant to players who are more on the early stages of the game. So here are these topics. There is some gear that is great for the scavenger. Then there are some incredible gear values that will help out players from the start of the game to players who are in the late game. I see people requesting donations that they don't need to be requesting even in the late game. Then I want to give an overview of the purple gear in terms of just the rate at which certain pieces of gear appear that will help show how I think about which purple gear pieces that I personally buy. And then I want to talk about the character shards because the accelerated drops have completely changed the value of using the guild store for farming in the early stages of the, of the game that I've been exploiting in my new account. So before we stop by the guild store, we're going to visit the scavenger and we need to talk about the relic materials. We need to talk about one in particular, and that is the chromium transistor. So most of you probably are aware that the Mark 7 Baw Armor mod is one of the most efficient ways and one of the cheapest ways to craft the chromium transistor. But over time, it becomes less effective at that. If we take a look at Lobot here, most of you probably use Ugnot to craft it. I use Lobot. Over time, you use up these handcuffs and it's no longer a great way to get those chromium transistors. It uses those handcuffs at a high rate and a lot of other gear pieces, some we're going to be talking about later in this video, use the handcuff as well. So there's another two pieces we need to talk about for the chromium transistor that start becoming better options. One of them some of you know about and that is this piece here, the Mark 7 Blast Tech Weapon Mod. This piece you can still craft, but crafting it is actually not one of the best ways to go about it. And there's a reason why I have 32 of them. The last piece that you guys should be aware of is this piece. This is a great hidden deal that I stumbled upon when I was going after Jedi Master Luke and needing to craft a bunch of these and was running low on gear. So keep those pieces in mind. We're going to head over to the character roster screen and I'm going to show you what it takes to craft those pieces of gear. So first up is that power cell. Let's take a look at Ayla. Here is that power cell. It takes this Nubian design tech, and the Nubian design tech needs this Mark III Blast Tech weapon mod. And it takes this thermal here, which uses that same Blast Tech weapon mod. And you can see that you, you can very quickly go through those Blast Tech weapon mods while you're crafting the Lauren R power cell, which is probably why a lot of you don't consider using this piece to craft chromium transistors. But you look at the quantities I have of these two pieces here. Now, before we take a look at the guild store, let's take a look at that other Blast Tech weapon mod. Here's that Blast Tech weapon mod. You see it's also using this Mark III Blast Tech to craft. So this 68 is going to evaporate really fast if we're doing a lot of relics. But here's the great news. Every piece you need for those chromium transistors you can be buying out of the guild store at a rate of five for cheap. I buy them every time that I see them. This is from my new account, so the counts are lower here. But right here is that Mark 7 Blastic mod, fully crafted, costs only 150 for five. Now the power cell, here's one half of it, that Mark 4 design tech is only for 150 for five. That thermal is the same deal, 150 for five. That means for 
for 450 guild store credits, you can be crafting 10 of those cro chromium trends, or you can be throwing 10 pieces of salvage towards a chromium transistor. So that means that this amount here That's equivalent to 450 guild store currency. That is one of the best deals in the game. You need to keep your eyes out for that and be purchasing them all the time. And you no longer need to worry about farming those cheap pieces or have to worry about the chromium transistor anymore at all. Before we move on to the other guild store values, there's one thing to keep in mind about the Mark IV Nubian design tech that we use to craft this power cell. If we take a look here at the bronzium wiring, that Mark IV Nubian design tech is right here. You get a value of 20 for them. It doesn't make sense to use them that way right now because right now most players are still going to have thousands of these lower level pieces. But as some players are already experiencing with the circuit board, a lot of those pieces that you started out with thousands of gets depleted pretty quickly when you're doing a lot of Galactic Legends and a lot of Relics. So over time, there might be a future where the design, Mark IV Nubian design tech makes sense for bronzium wiring. So something to keep in the back of your head for that potential future where we're all struggling with gear at the Scavenger. But before a final word of warning. The piece that you want from the guild store is the Mark IV Nubian design tech. There's a piece that looks exactly the same. It's the Mark III design tech. And it is right here. It costs 50 currency more. It is not useful for the scavenger. Some lower level players may want to consider buying this thing, but it, is, it will not help you craft anything in the scavenger. So you can see there's been a number of times I've picked them up, getting them confused. You want the cheaper one, not the more expensive one. So don't pay attention just to the image. And then you can see right here, I just purchased another one of those Mark VII Blast Tech weapon mods that you can use to craft a chromium transistor for cheap. So these next three pieces of low level gear here are incredibly valuable and players of any level should be purchasing them, from low-level players of less than a million GP to players of five million GP and up. You use these pieces at a very high rate. They use a ton of low-level salvage or redundant salvage. So by purchasing these pieces, you're saving yourself major headaches. And this is something that even veteran players are vulnerable to. And I bring this up not to, to throw shade, but this is my guild. These are some recent requests for low level gear donations. Both of these pieces you can run out on, but I don't run out on because I'm purchasing these pieces of gear in the guild store. Both of those pieces are part of these pieces of salvage. So let me show you what we are looking at here. We have Mark II Sinar hollow projectors. You get five of them for 150. That piece there is part of building the Nubian design tech, among other pieces. You see, we'll, we use two here versus another two. So we're consuming these at a rate of four, which means we are using up this handcuff at a rate of four. And this handcuff, you see that I'm very low on, is part of the Mark II ball armor that we were just using at the scavenger. So without purchasing this piece, we are consuming these handcuffs that are very valuable at a, at a much faster rate. So we are saving ourselves scavenger materials by purchasing this hollow projector. Now for the next piece here, the Mark V Blast Tech Weapon Mod. This one more players know about, but this is used very quickly. Let me show you what we're working with here. This is part of the Nubian design tech. Use even more of these. Every time we click deeper into the salvage here, we, there's a doubling effect going on. So if I were to make, a, make one of those Nubian scanners, I would be consuming 16 of this Mark V Blast Tech weapon mod. 
and you see that we need a two we need two of these Mark V bla Blast Tech weapon mods. That means we are using 32 of any of these pieces every time we are making a Nubian scanner. These next two pieces of gear are even more important than the Mark II Sinar Hollow Projector to be purchasing because you use them at even higher rates than the Hollow Projector. So let me show you what we're working with here with the Mark V Blast Tech weapon mod. This, let's go back to Zam, is part of the Nubian scanner. So every time we click on the salvage and go deeper into it, there's a doubling effect of how much gear we are consuming. So every time I craft a Nubian scanner, I'm using 16 of these Mark V weapon mods, which means I can only put on three Nubian scanners before I use up everything that I currently have. And now that we clicked one step deeper in, that means we're using 32 of any of these pieces and we are using 64 of any of these pieces. So you can see that this computer here, I would run out of, run out of after only putting on a, new, a few Nubian scanners. And that example I showed you in my donation inventory of my, my guild, it was consuming this piece that I have 300 of. One of my guild mates ran out of enough of these that they requested a donation of these. This Blast Tech weapon mod will be saving you running out on all these pieces. And you can see only th applying three Nubian scanners and I run out of what I currently have. That's why I buy those all the time. The same deal is happening with this Mark III thermal detonator, but it's even worse of how quickly you are consuming these. You only need, it costs 200, you get five. With the Mark III Marison thermal, pay attention to the doubling effect going on here. We're clicking in and going deeper. Every time there's a doubling effect, every time we craft one of these pieces, we need 16 of the piece that you can purchase from the guild store. When you go in and click on this prototype piece of salvage, you're, you're using five of these for every one of the crafted piece, which means you need 80 of these prototypes in order to craft the final piece of gear here. Every, anytime you put on this finisher, that is 80 of those thermals and you will go through all your thermals super fast. Go by, just by going to the guild store, you are saving yourself 80 of those prototypes every single time. That is an incredible deal in the, from the guild store. And before we leave this point, there's also the Mark II Marison Thermal that will occasionally show up in the guild store. I also like to purchase this because it also saves on this Mark III Blast Tech weapon mod that was a part of these other pieces of salvage, but it was also part of the pieces needed for the scavenger on that chromium transistor. And that's an, so those are pieces I'm always keeping an eye out on while uh, I'm doing my checks at every reset. So right now we will purchase those three pieces of of gear and it's going to cost only 400 or 450 guild store currency. And again, I like to keep these at about 50. So here's the gear that all of us are using the guild store for. I've broken it up by tier based on the characters that I'm currently tracking and how many of each piece that we need. So this top tier here I need currently for the characters that I'm working on over 2,000 of each of those. This next tier down I'm looking at, at anywhere from 800 to 2,000 and the bottom tier is looking at 800 and below. So what that does is give you a general idea of relative to each other piece, what the relative demands on each of those individual pieces of gear are. To keep in mind when I'm purchasing gear in the guild store, how much I need to have. Like I like to set a floor. Most of us know this intuitively, but this is what it looks like. And that is what I'm keeping in the back of my head as I'm making my purchases. Like I started out giving myself a minimum of 100 of each of these pieces, then I built that up to 300, 
and then I start deciding from there whether or not I want to spend any of the gear. But I like to have gear on hand for when any new releases occur. The shard economy changes have completely altered the efficacy for using the guild store as a resource for your character farms. If you've been watching my new account series, you see how I was able to do that to boost a lot of my performance and accomplish a lot of goals very quickly. In the future, I'm going to make a farming strategy video where I go into this in depth that's based on my philosophy of resource optimization and using the events as a resource for boosting your performance. But I want to give a general overview of how I think about things now because the old advice was you do the exclusive character farms and you move on because the purple gear was too important and too valuable. So you would do the cantina farms on the cantina or you would farm the characters that were not exclusive wherever else they were. Now I say that has changed not for every character but it is worth considering for a lot of them that maybe it is worth using the guild store now. To illustrate the impact that the shard economy changes had on the guild store, it used to cost to go from five stars to seven stars, 22,000 of the currency. Now it takes 11,000. It took 37 individual buys to go from five to seven stars. Now it takes 19. That's not just less currency, that's not just less buys, that's less time. And because of all those changes, I was able to go after Farm Boy Luke and Old Ben out of the guild store and not have to compete with all of the other farms in the cantina nodes and get them completely finished before level 85, completely setting me up for CLS. When I hit level 85, credits stopped me but I was, my farms didn't. And I was able to pursue every cantina goal that I was interested in at the same time. And for those same reasons, it is now how I would go after Finn and Scavenger Ray. What I've been doing with the clones is I've been splitting my clone purchases between the fleet store and the guild store, which has allowed me to finish them all very quickly. B2 is on an expensive cantina node. I wouldn't touch that cantina node anymore. I would be doing him out of the guild store. And I don't show the other ones because the characters aren't as relevant, but I would be considering a ton of other characters as guild store farms, like Barris, maybe Sith Assassin, and maybe if there's future changes to the Galactic Republic Jedi, it might be worth looking at them there. There's also an argument to be made that IG-100 or Snowtrooper are now worth farming out of the guild store. But you get a lot of their shards out of Bronziums and they're doubled now as well, where the frequency is doubled, where you can do a bulk of your farm. But if you're going after Troopers early, it might be worth doing that. Or if you're going after Separatists early, it might be worth using the guild store for that purpose. So in addition to all that, that meant Colonel Stark, Jin, and Young Han, I was all able to unlock and star up very quickly so that I could participate in events or help out my guild in light side territory battle or light side and dark side territory battles very quickly, far earlier than I would have been before and become a much better asset. Smugglers run with Young Han Solo. Young Han carries it. I'm able to do the second tier with a four star Han at like gear five, the protection up does all the work. That's a bunch of currency. That's like 230 currency that you're getting per smuggler's run. And that is at a time when you, when everything counts, that's a huge boost. So ignore that old advice. Look at the guild store. Things cost way less than they used to. And if you're early on that purple gear, you can wait on. You're, you're getting a lot of other things that you need to be doing. Building up your roster depth is worth doing, especially when you at a stage in your development where you can afford to do it. I'm hoping to do more videos like this quicker and faster. By zooming in on the scope, it makes the 
topics more manageable to deal with and allows me to tackle them faster. I want this channel to be a repository for answering any question that a player at any stage can come to and quickly and easily find an answer for. So thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone, and be excellent to each other.